not like, okay, I'm gonna do this again and have another shot at this. No, it's probably never gonna happen again. Certainly wasn't expecting to, but somehow, some way, I did it again. It's a once in a lifetime thing, is what they say. I'm sure I'll be in a great mood later. 2014, we need to do better than night. No one makes back-to-back -back main event final tables anymore. He's the guy everybody's going to be focused on this year. There's nobody else at that final table who, you know, has this kind of story behind them. Newhouse is more than just back-to-back -back November 9s. This is really a story about redemption. Mark Newhouse is on the verge of making modern poker history by going back-to-back -back in the November 9, two years in a row. And if he can pull this off, it's gonna be one of the most legendary achievements ever to have occurred at the World Series main event. What's up, man? Nothing better than starting your day in the parking lot of a commerce casino. Mark's going to be on the cover of our magazine, but part of this day was just to really get to know him. You went to Appalachian State? Yeah, went for two semesters. I was just like drinking the whole time, and I got kicked out for three drinking offenses. The second semester I went back, but I wasn't drinking at all. I was just playing online poker the whole time. And I had two $100,000 months in a row, starting from nothing, and eventually just ran it up and decided, yeah, I'm over school and this is what I'm gonna do. After dropping out of college, Mark really struck gold right off the bat. He is our champion. He is $1.5 million richer. A lot of people don't know this. The kids won a WPT before at Borgata. Mark, first on the scene as a kid back in 2006. At 21 years of age, that is something. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> Mark Newhouse, he's young, feels like he's invincible, and everything he's doing is working right now. He goes up and banks 1.6 million. And certainly it's had a roller coaster ride both at and away from the tables since then. He was referring to himself as a degenerate, like within minutes of like the win at the Borgata. After you won at the Borgata, you blew through a lot of money relatively quickly, where you said you made every single mistake a person could possibly make. I mean, I was very young and very confident and started playing the biggest games every day and playing online heads up against all the best players in the world. And I kind of like really let my life be consumed by poker. I was playing a guy 1,000, 2,000 on Poker Stars. He was down to his last 18,000. I had a friend who's like, dude, you should quit him. He's only got 18,000 left. But I was like, nah, I mean, that's sort of ethically wrong to beat a guy for that much. He ended up going on a run, and uh, he beat me for 280 straight in up 45 minutes. After that moment is sort of when the downward spiral started. I don't know who these are, man, but okay. <laughs> My biggest loss ever was 160 something. I lost 80,000 over two days in the Bahamas. Yeah, I made a bet that I wouldn't gamble for three days, and if I did, I have to give 10,000 to charity just right away. It's a good four and 800 game, like whatever, 10,000. I think I lost like 40 in the game. The whole thing with Chantel McNulty logging into his account and like 40 grand was missing from his account. He wasn't the villain in the story. He was the guy who kind of got taken advantage of because he was too trusting, especially with these women. I just remember my mindset when I was down to the last 400. It's like, what the fuck am I gonna do with 400,000? What is this? 400? <laughs> Light this shit on fire. How long did it take you to blow the 1.5 million that you had won at the Borgata? It took about a year. Yeah. I rented a house from Huck Seed and the power got shut off. I'm just living straight dead broke, living in a house with no power, and like at this point I was really ready to give up. But I got to be comfortable with it. Whereas before it's like, I got 400,000, like, fuck my life. You can have a very different perspective just based on where you're at and where you were before. Like, if you're coming from 2 million and you're down to 400,000, you're dead broke. It's the end of the world. You want to kill yourself. But if you're coming from literally nothing and you got 5,000, nice, you know, you came up. You get so jaded from playing high stakes poker where that, that money just means nothing to you. But uh, it's something you have to learn to do. You've had a real poker life, man. I mean, it's really yeah, I've been through all of it. Two hours. Mark Newhouse will need a nine, or his November nine is done. This is the six of diamonds fall on the river, and we have our first.
first knockout of this championship table. Mark Newhouse done in ninth place. When the bubble breaks and the final nine guys are established in July, each one of them is paid ninth place finishing money. Meaning in November, there's only one guy that doesn't have any more money coming his way. And it's the guy that gets knocked out in ninth place. In 2013, Mark Newhouse was that guy. Speak honestly, how do you feel walking off that table right now? Don't think it's fully hit me yet, but I'm sure I won't be in a great mood later. I told myself I wouldn't have any expectations and whatever happens, happens. But finishing ninth actually ended up being kind of devastating and didn't prepare myself for it uh, financially and had to get back to reality. Finished in ninth, he made a shit ton of money. A lot of that money went towards servicing debts that he still owed other people. I owed 160000 and I you know, accumulated more debt and more debt and more debt. And did 2013 pretty much get you out of that? Yeah. yeah this is really a story about redemption because he's had it all and he's lost it all and he's now been given a second chance to be able to do it again and be able to do it bigger. Jungle. Welcome Audio to the 2014 Jungle. World Series of Poker main event featuring a $10 million top prize. 2013 November Niner, Mark Newhouse is still in the hunt. I don't know much line, but I do know one thing. No one, no one makes back-to-back -back main event final tables anymore. I think it's easier to win a lottery than a back-to-back -back final table this thing. The odds of this happening are so astronomically low, it's sort of like somebody winning Powerball. It is uh, 9.26 p.m. here on July 14th, final night of the WSOP 2014. All in backstage with Mark Newhouse and Chino Ring. It's not an easy feat to do. Mark is in real good contention, real good shape to actually be the first person in history to actually do this. He's pacing around a little bit right now. He's got his buddies around him and stuff, but you know he's sweating like... Fuck, man. Mark's a good friend of mine. We've both been through a lot. We've, you know, we've come a long way, but it doesn't matter what's going on in your life. If you could just zone that out and do your best at the profession that what we do, which is poker, man, that's what it's all about, and the kid's about to do it. It looks like we might see history in the making. There's 10 players left, and wouldn't you know it, in poetic fashion, Newhouse is the one that knocks out the last guy. Establishing the November 9, making history. All in Magazine here with the man of the hour. Congratulations, first of all, Mark. Thank you. What does that feel like? First guy to go November 9, November 9. I mean, it feels great. I honestly don't know if it's hit me yet. It's a major accomplishment, and uh, I'm very happy about it. It's four months away. I don't, I don't even want to think about it right now. He hasn't played a hand of poker since the World Series ended. It sounds to me almost like trying to shorten his days, like turn the time between now and then into a haze so he doesn't really have to think about it until it happens. And then when it happens, then he can sort of figure out what the consequences will be. We kept asking him, you know, what's your plan? Like, what are you going to be doing? What do you want to do? And he just shut it down every time. He's like, I have no plan. Like, you asked me, what are you going to do in November after this happens? I'm not even thinking about it yet. I'm intentionally putting very little thought into it. And uh, after November, whatever place I finish, however much money I have, that's when I can start thinking, what am I gonna do with this situation I'm in right now? I'll make all those decisions then and evaluate my situation then. And like, let's say, okay, I need fourth place money to do everything I wanna do, and then I finish fifth. It, it can be mentally devastating. I am gonna just let the cards fall and evaluate my situation when it comes this final table is outlining the rest of his life. You guys caught me at the right time. Good time to spend a day with All In Magazine. We're back at the studio, shooting the cover right now. Mark Newhouse. All right, so if we're gonna bring Mir back. You know, he was a hard character to assess from a distance. But in meeting him today, uh, I have to say he lived up to the best of my expectations. He seems like a guy who has experienced all the ups and downs that a poker player can experience and has come out the other end a better person for it. And I, I really am rooting for him in this tournament. After spending a good day with him here in LA, 100% I'm bought in. I'm buying. <laughs> Let's do it, man. Hell yeah. Now the real journey begins. <laughs>